This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. So in this video, we're gonna show you how you can get it set up for the display of your user's profile images. So inside of your bubble application, what you're gonna to wanna to do is to get an image element and then place that image element onto the page. And you're gonna to wanna to size it to the size that you're looking for. If it's gonna be something that's up in the uh, actual header where maybe it's gonna be utilized as part of the representation for where the user clicks to access their profile data or something, you might wanna do something smaller like a 30 by 30. If it's gonna be larger, then you might wanna be thinking around 120 by 120. Of course, this is completely dependent upon the way in which you want it to look on your page. But in order to have it as a round circle, you do need the width and the height to be equal to each other. And then after that, you're gonna to wanna to come down to the roundness and then type in 360 to be able to have it be a full circle. Uh, some things that people like to do often with this is they like to put an outset as a sort of shadow. For me personally, when I'm doing my outsets, I put the vertical and the horizontal to zero and zero, and I'll put a blur radius to something around two. So it's not something that's uh, too visible to the user, but it still does what it's looking to do in terms of have it jump off the page slightly. So once you have your image element set up, uh, in your database, you wanna make sure that you have on the user data type a uh, image as the data type, but that data field, you can label it what you want. I usually label mine as profile image. So to make sure that you have that, when you do this, you wanna just say profile image. I'm gonna label mine as two, because I'll end up deleting it. And then you choose image here and just press on create. So you'll end up needing to have a system in place to allow your users to upload their images. And we do have a video that goes over how to get profile images uploaded into your application. So if you haven't viewed that video, definitely check that video out. Now, once the um, setup is complete with your database, then back onto the image element itself, you're gonna to need to do the dynamic image. And in this particular one, I'm just gonna be referencing the current user. If this was a page that's supposed to display a profile of a user, you'll probably have your page content set to user and then you'd be using the current page user. But either way, my dynamic expression, as soon as I get to a user as the data type, I'm gonna choose my data field of profile image. And then after this, I'm gonna click on more, and I'm gonna come into processed with MGIX. And when I get into the processed with MGIX, I'm gonna select this auto crop around the face. Now the padding around face has just some different values associated if you're not gonna do false, one to eight, they are going to basically give a little bit of space between the person's face and the actual image element. So in this first one, as the example, I have that set to eight. And in this one that we're setting up right now, we have it set to zero. So we can actually preview how that looks different when we come into a preview and refresh the page here we'll see the bit of a difference. So you can tell that you don't really want something that close, especially when uh, your user has teeth like that. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of space out there and give a little bit of padding around that. So I just came back into the image element and then into the processed with MGIX and I chose the value of eight. So now let's get back onto that page and display how that looks probably a lot better and gives a little bit more space around the edges there, okay? So hopefully this helps you get profile images set up into your application. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.